China has revealed plans to enhance its renewable energy output while maintaining its crude oil output and expanding its natural gas supply. They are eager to accomplish this now because it will help them fulfill their goals related to energy independence and combating climate change. The production of greenhouse gases in China is the highest in the world. However, it has pledged to reach carbon neutrality by the year 2060 and has claimed that carbon emissions will peak by 2030. The National Development and Reform Commission has pledged to speed up the process of energy structural adjustment. They will also foster energy supply security in a low-carbon transition. Beyond that, China is also shifting the balance of power in the global oil and gas industry through cooperation with other oil and gas exporting countries, which could change everything. Hey guys, welcome back! Before we start, don't forget to scroll down and hit the like and subscribe buttons below. And let's get to it! China said that its crude oil production would remain at 4 million barrels per day or 200 million tons per year early in 2022. In addition, the country has promised to increase annual natural gas output by 230 BCM by 2025, up from 205 BCM in 2021. It also promised an active expansion of efforts to find and use natural resources like shale oil and gas. Coal bed methane generating facilities would also be sought after in Inner Mongolia, Xinjiang, and Shanxi and a gas storage capacity of 55 to 60 BCM or 13% of total yearly consumption was another goal China set for 2025. The government also said it will finish a southern expansion to the existing China-Russia gas pipeline. And so long as it doesn't compromise food safety, the Chinese government will support research and development of biofuels including ethanol, biodiesel, and biojet fuel. China has halted a statewide plan to add 10% ethanol to petrol by 2020. This followed a precipitous decline in maize inventories and constrained biofuel availability across the country. By 2025, China plans to raise the percentage of non-fossil fuels used to produce energy to nearly 20%, up from current 16%. The country also claims dominance over coal consumption in steel, chemical, and cement production. And coal-fired power plants with a capacity of around 30 GW will be shut down between 2021 and 2025. It also planned to increase its generating capacity from hydropower to 380 GW and from nuclear power to 70 GW that same year. At least 62 GW of pumped hydropower capacity will be installed in China. And in order to generate electricity during peak hours, this system pumps water to a higher reservoir during off-peak hours. Furthermore, oil is the primary topic of discussion between China and Saudi Arabia last year. Chinese President Xi Jinping traveled to Saudi Arabia in December last year for the first time in over seven years. He spoke with officials from throughout the Middle East and inked a comprehensive strategic relationship with the world's greatest oil exporter. Since U.S.-Saudi relations have deteriorated over OPEC's decision to cut crude oil production, this visit hints that China and the Gulf area are expanding their economic links. According to a statement Xi wrote and published in Saudi media, the trip was made to improve ties between China and the Arab world. Several agreements and memoranda of understanding are included in the partnership agreement signed by the parties, and this involves using hydrogen energy and improving communication between the Kingdom's Vision 2030 and China's Belt and Road Initiative. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's relationship with China is one of the country's most important and dynamic. It also ranks first among oil importers worldwide, and when it comes to Middle Eastern trade, China relies on Saudi Arabia more than any other country. According to Ayham Kamel, the director of Eurasia Group's research team on the Middle East and North Africa, energy collaboration will be at the forefront of talks between Saudi and Chinese leaders. He said widespread agreement exists that a structure must be established to handle this reliance on the political level. Furthermore, the scale of the energy revolution in the West makes this a crucial point. Every country's government has promised to reduce carbon emissions significantly in the next decades. 
In fact, Canada and Germany are only two examples of countries that have increased their spending on renewable energy to move quickly towards zero-carbon economies. Oil and gas production in the United States has expanded dramatically since the turn of the century. More than that, it is speeding up its shift to renewable energy. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in February, the world has been scrambling to increase its energy production and storage capacity. Additionally, the Western world has added to the oil market's confusion by imposing an embargo and price limit on the world's second largest exporter of petroleum. China has also made energy security a top concern. Chinese customs data shows bilateral commerce between China and Saudi Arabia reached $87.3 billion in 2018, up 30% from 2020. Much of the transition was concentrated on oil. In 2021, China spent $43.9 billion on crude oil imports from Saudi Arabia and this amounts to 77% of the entire value of items imported from the kingdom. Moreover, a quarter of Saudi Arabia's total oil exports are also in that range. The second biggest economy in the world depends critically on imported oil and gas. According to government statistics, it imported 72% of its oil needs last year. Also, 44% of the demand for natural gas came from other countries. Xi highlighted the need to secure reliable energy sources during his speech at the 20th Party Congress in October. These remarks followed a period of widespread blackouts and rising international energy costs due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Moreover, China benefited from Moscow's desperation to find new clients for Russian petroleum as the West rejected it months after the invasion. Russia supplied the most oil to China between May and July, but Saudi Arabia has since recovered the top rank. Saudi Energy Minister Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman assured China that his country will continue to be a trustworthy and loyal partner. The Institute for the Analysis of Global Security's co-director also argues that Saudi Arabia is interested in strengthening its energy connections with China. Now, Saudi Arabia might offer Beijing a reward with far greater strategic implications than guaranteed supplies. There have been discussions between Riyadh and Beijing about pricing part of Saudi Arabia's oil exports to China in yuan rather than US dollar. And such a deal may bolster Beijing's hopes of increasing the renminbi's international influence. Additionally, because of their long-standing arrangement, Saudi Arabia may only accept US dollars for oil sales and must keep a portion of its reserves in US treasuries. U.S. security assurances are exchanged for this arrangement, so there may be a severe monetary repercussions for violating it. With the petrodollar system, the U.S. dollar has remained the primary commodity in international reserve currency. However, neither Beijing nor Riyadh ever officially acknowledged the rumors of negotiations. However, the two parties explored the option, which was seen as natural by analysts. It is speculated that this is already taking place, but neither China nor the Saudis want to draw attention to it in the media. He also noted that Xi's trip might be a significant step in the degradation of the dollar's role as the world's reserve currency. Meanwhile, Putin claims Russia is now a major supplier of oil and gas to China. President Putin of Russia announced in December that Russia was a major source of oil and gas for China. In fact, in the first 11 months of 2022, 13.8 billion cubic meters of gas were delivered to China via the power of Siberia pipeline. Putin boasted that Russia is now among the top oil exporters to China, which is a claim backed up by the year's numbers. In November, Russia surpassed Saudi Arabia as China's primary source of crude oil imports. Putin also noted that Russia supplied China with liquefied natural gas in fourth place and pipeline gas in second place. According to him, December shipments were 18% above agreed upon daily quotas. Russia energy exports to China have gone up a lot since February 24 when Moscow sent its military into Ukraine and the West put on Russia sanctions that had never been done before. Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak reported on November 29 that the value of Russia's energy export to China had climbed by 64% this year.
and the volume had increased by 10%. It's clear that China is exploring a lot of overseas partnership and this could be the start of a shift in balance of power in global oil and gas supply. So what do you think of China's tactics? Do you think it will work? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments section below. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching till the end. Before you go, make sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell to trigger YouTube's algorithm and see more of our videos on your homepage. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more interesting videos like this.